Aloha and welcome to this screencast on the Meteor application template. In this one, I'm just going to walk through the functioning of the system. Um, if uh, you've installed it correctly um, and you run Meteor npm run start, you'll get some stuff like this. You'll see that it's going to define a couple default users and some default data. I'll show you late in a later screencast how that all works out. But just to let you know, there's two users that are defined by default and some sample data. And you're also going to get this um, bcrypt message because I don't install bcrypt because sometimes on Windows that's a hassle. So this doesn't really matter that much for um, prototyping purposes. But you'll see at localhost 3000, this is what will come up. This is the landing page. So let's log in. Um, we have this predefined user called John and a predefined password called change me and if we do submit and we get rid of one password we can see we go to this page which is just like the landing page except you can see now we're logged in as john at foo.com and we've got um, two additional pages that are available to us a list of page which is going to show the um, data that's already been uh, initialized for john and we can create another one. So we could say, let's say bread, and there's four pieces of bread, and the condition of the bread is excellent. And we say submit, and we get this little alert saying that the ad succeeded. And now if we go to list stuff, you can see we've got bread. If we decide that um, you know this wasn't the right entry, we can go to an edit page by clicking on this link. And then we see bread, and we decide, ah, oh, the bread wasn't really that good. It's actually only in fair condition. We press submit. We see the, the update succeeds. And if we go to list stuff, we can see that the condition has been changed to fair. Um, so that's basically it. And, and I want to note that um, if we go back to this, you can see that we did create bananas and boogie boards for the admin user, but we don't see that. Um, it, when we're listing the stuff associated with John because this is a multi-user app in it um, and we only show the data associated with a particular user in, a, in another screencast I'll get into how we actually do that. So that's basically what you need. To, I guess we can also say that you know there's a certain amount of error checking that goes on with this form stuff and, and I'll talk about that later when we talk about forms. Um, for now, for the walkthrough, I just want to note that there's a second user uh, that we'll now look at called the admin user. Um, and if we log in as the admin user, which is to scan this change me as the password, okay, we get the same stuff that we did before. Notice that we're seeing the admin user's um, data for these two pages. So these are just the same, you know, but they're but because this admin user is defined with the role of administrator, um, anybody with the role administrator gets the access to this special page called admin, um, which is a common you know, web application functionality is you want to have a super user who can do things that normal people can't. And so this application provides a simple example of that. You can log in, you can define in your settings file that there's this special user and what their name and password is. And then if you log in as that person, you get a special page. This special page, the, the special thing about it is it's going to show all of the data um, that any user has defined and show their username. Um, so that's the basic run through of the functionality of the system. There's this, this sign out page. Um, and given that, let's go on to the next sections where we talk about the internals.